Hey everybody, before we get into today's episode, I want to take a minute to introduce our latest service called Crowd Insight by Gadgetflow. It's an awesome tool we made to help you get honest feedback for your upcoming crowdfunding project. Some of the big results we've seen include increased conversion rate, finding out why your project isn't performing well, and getting feedback you need from potential backers. So please head over to gadgetflow.com slash crowd insight to check it out today. You can also find a link in this week's show notes. Now let's get into the episode. Hello, world. This is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Jason Fulmer, and Jason is an entrepreneur and has built a really awesome tool to help crowdfunders succeed after they finish their campaigns, and it's called Crowd Control. He has a ton of great things to say on the topic of crowdfunding and e commerce. So, without further ado, here is my interview with Jason Fulmer. All right, I am here with Jason from Crowd Control. Jason, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing really good, Alex. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Yeah. So we're excited to talk to you. We're excited to have you on the Gadget Flow podcast this week. But first, I wanted to just get uh, a little background. So for people who are listening who may not know who you are, can you just give a little background into who you are and what it is you do? Yeah, so uh, my name is Jason Fulmer, and I've got two different companies, one that we started from crowdfunding, and then one that we started for crowdfunding. Um, Crowd control is basically everything I learned from my first crowdfunding campaign and and successive crowdfunding campaigns, where I saw a a missing need. for helping projects transition from crowd control to actually running like a business. So that's basically the goal of crowd control, to help you run your business like a business after crowdfunding. Mm. Cool, man. Yeah, so you uh, specifically, what what do you guys do, just for listeners? Because I know you're, you're, you're working with Shopify, essentially. Yeah, so basically we build a bridge between uh, platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo to Shopify to let you use all the power of Shopify and their e-commerce solutions to manage your backers better, to um, replace the survey tools of uh, Kickstarter to provide you with fulfillment solutions and the app- the opportunity for add-on sales and all that kind of stuff. Got it. That makes a lot of sense, man. And it sounds like a very useful tool. And I, I have a bunch of questions regarding it. But first, I want to just, uh, you know, get your backstory a little bit. Like, how did you get into crowdfunding in the first place? Like, how did you find this open door into crowdfunding? Um, what is your story? What's your background? So about four or five years ago, I uh, just started a, a small company called Declan and um, had, a, had an idea for a product with that and we took it to crowdfunding and we were funded over 1200%, um, had about 2300 backers and it was, you know, it just kind of blew up. And from that, I, I thought, wow, we're, we're really in it. So I want to do this right. And Again, we we had a lot of backers, and then we also had a lot of product variations. We had uh, more than a a dozen SKUs, and so I thought, you know, this is, there's a lot of opportunity for error, and I want to do this right, and I didn't like the solutions that were available for me at that time. Um, You know, our competitors and the the pledge manager circuit, um, they're great, but they're kind of just another third-party service, and I don't want to bounce my customers around from point to point. And so even way back then with Declan, um, I figured out a way to, to use my own online store to replace that survey process. So I could figure out you know what styles um, my backers wanted, get their shipping address, and then the huge value that I saw from um, the other services that were out there at the time was add-on sales. Because you can get you know another 10 to 20% of your funding total through add-ons. So if your your campaign had $100,000, you could get, get another 10000 10, to $20,000 just by giving your backers the, the opportunity to buy more. And so that was really um, kind of the catalyst for crowd control 
but then I got busy with Declan and ran that for a couple of years and then we figured you know we we should really look into the crowd control idea um, mm. so that that's how everything got started that's awesome so I mean specifically I, I'm curious with crowd control like hands-on I know you you just explained it but maybe for you know a, a layman like yeah. I <laughs> what what was the real problem like the real wall you kept hitting um that made you think this needs like there I, we we can solve this problem yeah. what was that issue what was what was the thing you kept hitting that made you want to create it in the first place so the default solutions with kickstart so kickstarter is great for getting your money but everything that needs to happen next, it's a really poor solution. Um, specifically, getting your customers' addresses, getting um, y your backers, uh, getting the items they want, but then also shipping all of that. You know, w we had twenty three hundred item or twenty three hundred backers, and then shipped over five thousand items. And Kickstarter just doesn't have the infrastructure to support that. And so my what I felt was the most intuitive resource was use e-commerce, e use something that's built to handle those kinds of needs. Got it. Cool, man. I think, I think that's awesome. And I can see it from here, you know, like I, I've, uh, I've seen a lot of crowdfunding campaigns over the years and stuff, and you don't hear a lot about how, um, it's, I think it's a real struggle, but you don't hear much about it. Cause I guess it's not very, uh, fun to talk about is how, how hard <laughs> it is after your campaign is over and the, the massive headache that it can be after it's all said and done, you have your money, but now you have to follow through on the whole thing. Well, and, and part of my thought with that is, yeah, there are some solutions that can make that process a little easier, but the fact of the matter is you, you still have to set up your business and run your business later. Um, so we kind of cut out the, the middleman in that situation and just say, okay, we're going to show you how to run your online store in the process of making your post crowdfunding um, experience better. Yes, I love that. So what what would you say is the biggest, I'm just curious, what's the biggest misconception you'd say about crowdfunding and e-commerce and how the two meet? What's What do you think uh, people mostly miss the mark on most commonly between the two? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. It, what I've been learning as we've been working with um, users in the in our beta launch is everyone's on a different plane. Um, you've got some people where they've got a, an idea and they think, oh, I'm going to make a little hobby out of this. And then you've got some people where um, they have intentions of making a full-blown business. And then you've got the mix in between where you've got the, the hobbyists that blow up into a business and you've got the business people that just fall flat. Um, so everyone's needs and understanding seem to be in a, a different um, a different realm, and so it, our challenge is educating people to understanding. No, like you should run this for you know with the intent to to be successful, and you should take advantage of the existing solutions and resources to really get the most out of this experience. Definitely definitely i can i can see that man so um i mean i'm just curious i know you guys are still <clears throat> in beta and you're you're still getting ready to fully launch and stuff but i'm wondering if you have any great examples maybe you your guys uh you guys being one but any examples of like transformation that you've seen using this this uh service yeah so we've got one user um where they did a highly customized shoe um, and they did all kinds of options with the overall between the sizing and the colors that were they offered they had 1600 different wow. SKUs and Kickstarter just isn't created for, for that kind of volume so we transitioned them to Shopify using crowd control and use Shop Shopify um, as a survey platform and we were able to make them another hundred and forty thousand dollars uh just through this just by better meeting their needs of um you know finding out what their backers wanted and, and getting their their backer addresses that is very cool so I, this might sound goofy but 
Ex specifically, you said you use you know you use crowd control to get them on to Shopify. So can you explain that process to me? Is it just like a straight up plugin? Is it just, like explain getting from the Kickstarter into Shopify? Like what you guys do there? Yeah. So one of the reasons we chose Shopify is because the customizability and the the solutions they offer, um, of which is their app store. Mm. Um, so Shopify or Crowd Control will soon be available in their Shopify in the Shopify App Store, and after you've installed Crowd Control on your your Shopify dashboard, we take your your backer report, um, your raw data from uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and upload that, that into our system. In all, so what some people don't know um, is after your campaign, all you get is a backer email and then their pledge information. You don't get their shipping address, you don't know what items they they want. You know, if they've got a shirt, um, small, medium, large, red, black, blue, whatever, you don't get any of that. And so that's really where uh, where we come in. And so we, we bring that, um, that data into crowd control. And from that, we'll build out the, the customer experience uh, where the products that your, your backers are getting are just products that you've built on Shopify. Mm -hmm. So you get a you get full customization there in product descriptions, photos, videos, whatever it may be, um, and designate that as products that these people are expecting. Yeah. So after you you've created that, we and then you also get to create a uh, a notification template for uh, for your backers. You get to customize the emails that we send out to your backers to bring them to your website. Mm. Man, it just it. It sounds crazy that that's an issue. <laughs> like, and I'm so happy you guys came along to fix it because to me it's crazy that uh, you know if you back a you know you get a T-shirt or something you don't you don't have the address or the color or any of that. I mean that's that's wild to me. So it's a real problem you guys are solving, um, which is very very cool. And I think that that's I could see that especially you know a, a shoe with 1,600 SKUs. <laughs> You're gonna need a lot of help managing yeah. that. Well, well, and what's been the most surprising thing to me, especially because, you know, I, I kind of thought of this solution four or five years ago during our first campaign, but what blows my mind is we're the first people to offer this because to me, this is the most intuitive and logical way to run your business. And why we're the, the people to only be doing this now is, is mind blowing to me. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why everyone should go use it. <laughs> Which is very, very <laughs> right. Cool, so. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, just out of curiosity, what do you think is the most important tip for someone, you know, you've had successful campaigns yourself and now you're building this tool to help people succeed in having successful crowdfunding campaigns. What is an important tip for anyone who's thinking about launching a crowdfunding campaign? What's something you think that you is a non-negotiable, you have to focus on this in order to succeed? Yeah. Um, maybe besides the the obvious having a great product, maybe maybe right. a little more detailed. Y yeah, um, the the first thing to come to my mind, um, and, and this is, isn't even necessarily about the greatest success, but it, it's for the best experience for the the project creator, for the business owner. Mm. Um, under promise, over deliver, because it. Especially when when you first get started, you're you're so excited by all this support that you've got. So you know you've got a couple thousand people that are excited about your product, and you're excited about it too. And it's easy to to just put way too much pressure on yourself by by telling your backers, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna be delivering next week." When in reality, you're not gonna be ready for another six months. Right. You know, and so then you put all this unnecessary pressure on yourself where you've got people saying, hey, you said that this was going to come last week and it's three months later. And so I think not necessarily for the, the success and longevity of the business, but for the success and helping you do what's most important is just setting reasonable expectations for your backers and then blowing their minds um, by you know, by delivering this incredible product maybe earlier than you initially told them. Mm, I think that's great, man. It's so smart. And I, I've seen it happen so many times where 
people will give a date, and I know stuff happens. I think generally people who are, you know, backers, the community seems to be pretty understanding of, you know, timelines getting pushed back. But there have been so many where I'm like, man, you could have done yourself a lot of favors by, you know, telling us a later date or whatever it was, you know. Uh-huh. And, um, mm-hmm. I think that's... some Something always comes up. Even when you don't think it will, it... Uh, you know, I, I was just talking to a friend the other day. Everything takes twice as long that, or two times longer than you expect, and costs twice as much money as you'd expect. <laughs> right. There's just always something, and so you, you need to plan uh, plan accordingly. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that, man. So you guys are working on launching the full version. So what what can people expect from the release? Um. You know, just some really great solutions. It's for me the most exciting part is being able to to give your backers this incredible first impression. I mean, you you take these people that are excited about your product and you redirect them to your website, a website that is you know fully in line with your brand's voice and your image. So you you crowd control is, is just this bridge and and you get full control of you know your colors and the imagery and and ev- everything you say and that that was part of my inspiration for uh my, my very first campaign thought i want to make this look as professional and legit as possible and and for me that's one of the most exciting things about crowd yeah, control absolutely man i'm looking forward to uh seeing it myself so where can people stay up to date with you and what you're doing and, and everything you guys are up to yeah so right now um our, our website is crowdcontrol.co and people can contact us there we we are in private beta and so we're not working with with anybody and everybody it's got to make sense for us and for them of course mm. Um, but that's really the, ble- the best place to, to get started with us. Awesome. Well, Jason, I appreciate you so much, man, and I really am looking forward to seeing the final version of this. So uh, thank you so much for being on the Gadget Flow podcast this week. We really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. It's been really great talking to you. That was my interview with Jason Fulmer. Please make sure to go check out everything he's doing at Crowd Control and make sure to connect with him online. Thanks for being on, Jason. This podcast is made by GadgetFlow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out the website for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode, so in the meantime, please head over to iTunes and rate and review our show. Until next time, thank you for listening to the Gadget Flow Podcast.